We've got reverb still. I'm not sure why we're going to reverb, but we are. Oh, somebody else here. Is that better now? It is better now. All right. All right. Mm -hmm. and, uh, I'm testing a couple different things. So can I get a thumbs up from the people who are remote so that they can hear me all right? Give me a thumbs up. All right. If at any point you can't hear the people who are speaking, let us know and we'll make adjustments. Yeah. All right. We have a uh, was it? It's it's six o'clock. It's six o'clock, and we have the three board members here. I see. Uh, we need Joe. I see Joe is there, and I saw Mike earlier. Um, I see Tom is on the list. Is Diamond there? Yes, I'm here. Can people still hear me remotely? I can, but you're yes. allowed, so I don't know if it's on I'm my not, answer. I'm not seeing Diamond on the list. And um, Joel, I'll leave it up to you if you want to read I see her. I see, see I can see Diamond. Okay. Can Wait, Diamond. Hear, can you hear me? There she is. <laughs> uh, I'm thinking that uh, everybody's here, so Joel, if you want to get things started, I think we can go ahead. All right. Can everyone hear me? Yes. Yes. Okay. So we'll call to order. Oh, Joe, your microphone is muted. Uh, not on my end, it's not. I can hear I good. Can. Little microphone, bottom left. I can hear Joe go real good, so. Whoop. Nope. Can't hear you then. Okay. Now you're I, good. It's there. unmuted on my end. Can everyone hear me? Yes. I can. Let's try this. I, I turned the volume on mine. I, I think it's using mine as the main rather than using the extra one that we used. But I think that we can make this work. So why don't you go ahead, Joe? Okay. We will call to order the special board meeting for the school district of Milton for April 1st, 2020. Uh, I don't have the agenda in front of me, so I'm going to wing it a little bit. Uh, do we have any changes to our agenda, Mr. Dahman? No changes to the agenda. Okay, then we would look for a motion to approve the agenda as it is. I'll move. Second. Thank you. Moved and seconded to approve the agenda. All in favor say aye. 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 I think it's valuable for us to do roll call votes for all of our votes just to make sure that, that we don't miss anybody. Yeah, I was going to do that, Rich, with the exception of the agenda and adjournment. I thought those that were inconsequential enough. So I heard enough consensus there. I'm going to call that motion passed that will approve the agenda. So um, let's move to the next item on the agenda, and I'm going to let uh, the folks on site uh, guide us through that. So. Yeah, we will. Uh, the agenda title is Discussion and Possible Action on Continuation of Employment and Pay for All Support Staff Employees During the Health Emergency Closure. And that's the only agenda item. So when we finish that item, we would be ready to adjourn. And there is a information, a, a memo that went to the board that was part of that information, and I will highlight some of that. When I talk, I'm getting a lot of, of, of and I've turned off, uh, I've muted my mic here, but I want to make sure that people can still hear me. Remote people, can you hear me now? Uh, yes. I'm assuming that's not, so yeah. I will, uh, 
I will continue then and just highlight some things from that memo and kind of talk through uh, the situation uh, and then open it up to the board for questions, discussion, and a potential motion. Uh, if you recall back in mid-March, uh, there was an emergency order uh, that was sent out from, uh, from Governor Evers and it um, talked about uh, ending, uh, closing all public and private schools in the state of Wisconsin for purposes of the pupil instruction and extracurricular activities. Uh, it started on Wednesday, March 18th at 5 p.m. And in that original order was scheduled to end uh, on April 5th, uh, 2020. Uh, since that time, back on March 17th, another emergency order was issued by the governor that extended that uh, school closures until April 24, uh, 2020, or until a superseding order is issued. So now we're living under that guidelines from that latest emergency order. Uh, initially, uh, our response was to uh, keep support staff whole during the health emergency. And by that, I mean that if we had been reopening on April 6, we had identified enough work for all of our staff to be not just the teachers and administrators, but also our hourly support staff uh, so that we could continue to pay them through uh, school starting back up on April 6. With that closure extending, um, the situation now warrants board level discussion and possible action because of the extension through April 24th and potentially longer than April 24th. And our agenda item tonight is specific to our hourly staff. Our contract staff, teachers and administrators, are continuing to work, although work looks a little bit different for everyone than it did a few weeks ago. We're continuing to provide services, uh, academic services, support services for students and staff uh, and families, uh, providing meals uh, for people. And that requires a lot of people to continue to work. Um, so the idea is that our status as far as paying our teaching staff and our administrators hasn't changed from what it's been in the past. I mean, those people are continuing to work on any days that they would be working. Um, they would continue to get paid as they normally would. Uh, with our support staff, and those include positions like clerical aides, library aides, instructional aides, uh, special education and nurse aides, bookkeepers, custodians, administrative assistants, nutrition team staff, and in information technology staff. Um, the service roles of those people vary greatly <clears throat> in the amount of flexibility as far as who is required to work on site, who is able to work off site. And our initial plan being just a couple days before spring break and then the one week uh, this week coming back after spring break, uh, included a lot of professional development work for staff who weren't able to work on site uh, and didn't have offsite work that they could do. Um, but because of that extension now, uh, we, needed, we need to have the board uh, approve steps moving forward. We do have a policy, policy number 4131, uh, it's on reduction in staff, and it does give the board the right to reduce staff whenever circumstances warrant, but our administrative team is not recommending that option. Uh, we're recommending that the district continue to pay hourly staff their regular rate of pay if they're available to work and meet the work expectations either, either virtually or on site uh, as directed by their administration and extending that through May 1st for the date of return, uh, whichever of those things comes first. And if we find out in the meantime that the event of the, the closure gets extended beyond May 1st, uh, the school board has uh, meetings coming up on April 13th and April 27th, where they would be able to address any issues that arose. Um, just a couple more things that I want to highlight from that and then answer any questions that people have is again, we are continuing to operate as a school district. And I think that's important to know. Um, teachers, administrators, and all staff continue to provide learning opportunities for students 
uh, meet student and family needs, again, serving lunches, uh, maintaining and cleaning our buildings, and continuing our essential operations in, in areas like payroll and, and other business offices, making sure our bills get paid. Um, many people in this support staff group continue to work uh, both on-site and off-site in their regular jobs. Some of these jobs are able to be completed off-site, some require staff members to come on site uh, at times uh, to complete their work. Uh, but people are working off site whenever it's possible to do that. In that support staff group, uh, we also have training, professional development opportunities for them uh, to make all staff to make those available to all staff as their available time allows. Uh, some of them work. Um, Full, uh, full days, some of them just work part-time part days uh, in their regular work. Uh, many aides of the aides and other support staff are helping to provide support to students, whether it's academic support, helping to provide meals to students, uh, support for social and emotional learning, uh, et cetera. And we know that we'll have times when we won't have work for all of this staff to do. Uh, but we'd like the board's uh, agreement to pay them now and then any time that we don't have uh, work to fill their day. So for instance, if a person typically works four hours a day and we don't have four hours of work for them to do that day, they bank the number of hours that they work uh, and we would have an expectation that that work would pre be performed at a later date once they're able to get that work done, uh, extending into the summer. Um, many districts are using a waiver system to um, have staff sign off on the ability to do that. So if the board gives us the okay to do that, we'd be putting together documentation for staff to sign off on um, where they would agree to work uh, hours at a later date in, in payment for the payment that they're getting now. It's kind of a pay now and work to work later system. Uh, but there is an expectation that the work would be performed for the hours that are paid. And the school year employees with that workload uh, could support summer school, summer learning opportunities, and perform other work as available in the summer. That is something, again, that as we gather more information, we, we are uncertain as to the extent of uh, the length of, of the school closure and of the health emergency. So putting this in place now allows us to plan for the next month through April 1st. Uh, as part of the, the uh, recommended motion, it also would give uh, myself the ability to act on behalf of the board if circumstances change. Uh, there's talk at the federal level about uh, another stimulus package potentially coming up that may change uh, the scenario. Uh, the governor may issue another emergency order that either extends the the date where school is closed or potentially brings us back sooner than April 24th. And uh, the recommended motion gives me the ability to respond as needed to address those different situations uh, regarding uh, staff uh, and employment issues. And we're, we're seeking the uh, board approval to offer the motion to allow payment for hours work to be performed at a later date. So, I'll read through that possible motion and then we can uh, discuss the information that I shared and answer any questions that anyone has. So the, the recommended possible motion is I move to provide for the continued employment and payment of support staff through May 1st of 2020 or the date of return, whichever comes first. Furthermore, the superintendent may act on behalf of the board with regard to payment, leave, and other employment matters that arise during the health emergency. In the event the closure is expected to extend beyond May 1st, 2020, the board will revisit this recommendation at the April 27, 2020 meeting. And this, would, this motion wouldn't preclude the board from also revisiting it uh, at our next regularly scheduled meeting on April 13th. Uh, if the situation changed between now and then, too. So, questions, thoughts, comments from board members, either here on site or, or uh, remote? Uh, Rich, let's, um, 
rather than being redundant and restating it, I think if everyone was able to hear that, uh, I would like someone to take that as a motion so and talking. presumably a second. Joe, can you repeat that? Um, yeah, before we get any questions, let's get a motion on the table and then we'll address questions and, and further uh, dialogue if need be. So could someone move that uh, the way that Rich uh, articulated it? I'll make a motion to provide for the continued employment and payment of all support staff through May 1st, 2020, or the date of return, whichever comes first. Furthermore, the superintendent may act on behalf of the board with regard to payment, leave, and other employment matters that arise during the health emergency. In the event the closure is expected to extend beyond May 1st, 2020, the board will revisit the recommendation at the April 27th, 2020 meeting. I second. Thank you. Uh, motion from Karen, seconded by Brian. Uh, as you all heard, uh, any other discussion on that motion? Questions for Rich or anyone else? Rich, I have a question. Yep. Um, who is monitoring the time that's getting banked? Is that the supervisors and the managers or is that the individual employee? Uh, the individual employee is, excuse me, I have to move that. The individual employee is working with their supervisor. The supervisors are the people who are monitoring uh, the work. So they, they track uh, both what work is being done and uh, how much time it's taking for the staff member to do that. And if an employee banks 80 hours and then they quit, what happens? But and they got paid. Could you Repeat that question one more time, please. So say an employee banks a bunch of hours because we don't have the work for them today, and then they quit. So they got paid by the school district for X amount of hours that they were intended to bank and use later, but then they quit their job. How does the school district recoup that? I think that's a good question. I'm gonna open, I'm gonna answer just, I'm going to answer kind of in general, and then I'll let uh, Chris Tukendorf and Carrie Bradley are both on this call too. So I'm going to share my thoughts a little bit uh, in general on that, and then open it up to them, and they might be able to provide a little bit more of the specifics. Um, a, a part of that is is a risk that we take, uh, but we but we also want to we want to make sure that we're doing two things, and there's there's kind of a a, a continuum of how different districts are approaching this. Some districts have passed motions that say, we're gonna to continue to pay staff and they aren't tracking the work that they do and aren't even providing uh, virtual learning opportunities for students. Uh, other districts have uh, taken a much more stringent approach uh, to the extent of uh, laying staff off uh, when they're not needed and, uh, and not paying staff at all, and we're looking at something that both keeps our staff whole, but also um, provides assurances that that work is getting done. And I think in general, if a, an employee is starting to bank large number of hours like that, I use the example of 80 hours, uh, then we would want to have their supervisor work with them and identify things that they can be doing right now uh, to be using down those hours. Some other things that we've talked about is we do have, um, some, some of the people in this group have been, are benefits eligible and have paid time off uh, while others don't. And, and that's one of the things that Chris and Carrie are, are more of the experts on that than I am. I'll let them speak a little bit to, to that topic. Uh, and we've talked about our, our ability and, and different ways that we can potentially recoup uh, any payments that, that staff members would still uh, owe us, if you will. So I'm going to uh, unmute mine and let uh, Carrie Bradley and, and Chris Tukendorf uh, chime in with their thoughts on that, too. Um, I can speak from what we have done in the past. Can you guys hear me? OK, sweet. Um, I'll speak to what we've done in the past from the school district to Milton. We have watched um, very closely when we have employees that um, 
choose either 20 or 24 payrolls and they have their compensation spread throughout a normal year. We work really closely with payroll to make sure that those individuals that are paid on 20 payrolls and they get close to running out of time off and that will usually tie into the springtime and then they quit. And then it's trying to, re to make sure that we are very cautious on how many hours they've used as well as tracking that. So we have a pretty good handle on it when it comes to day-to-day -day work. In this scenario, Carrie and I have talked with Rich already about it and we will work even closer with payroll and the supervisors on how many of those hours are being banked. I can't guarantee that uh, we're not gonna have any of those situations happen, Diamond, but we're, gonna, we're very cognizant of them potentially happening and gonna be watching them. Chris, how many employees, how many employees are we talking about approximately? For the support staff? Yeah. I think on, um, we were talking earlier, there's about 200 employees underneath the support staff category. And that's uh, any a range from working an hour a day all the way up to an eight hour day. And then our benefit hours would start at six hours a day. And do we know currently how many of those employees are not able to perform any function of their job duties? We have identified groups um, on a uh, spreadsheet that uh, Carrie and Rich and I have worked on that outlines <coughs> Um, those employees that have less consistent work than other uh, employee groups. So those are the employees that we are watching closely and working with their supervisors on maintaining and keeping an eye on those hours. Okay. And I can, I can see that uh, Carrie Bradley was going to add something to it. She looks like she's going to add something to that. So I'll I'll ask Carrie, can you add your thoughts on that too? Uh, Carrie, hold on a second. We're getting a lot of feedback here from you. Is, is your laptop muted on your end? We are not even. We're not able to hear you. Carrie Bradley, we're not able to hear you at all. And we lost we lost we lost Carrie Bradley's picture and we weren't able to hear her either. So I think we'll just continue and we will continue and, and if she comes back online, we'll We'll see uh, what she was going to add to that. So do we have an idea? I know you said you identified them by groups. Do we have an estimated percentage of that 200? How many were concerned about not being able to fulfill those hours? I think in general, from our, from our discussion, it seemed to us that approximately um, 75 of those 200 would be able to just continue with their, their typical work, whether it's on-site or off-site, be able to continue with their typical job duties, um, which for that, if it's 75 out of the 200 is you know, about 37% or so would be able to continue uh, to work. Um, that doesn't mean that the others wouldn't have things that they could do. We have um, a large number of staff members who could be working at a lot of our aides can be working with the teachers that they typically work with, uh, but working remotely to help design lessons, to uh, provide additional support for students. One of the things that we're hearing is that uh, we have some students who who are struggling a little bit with the virtual learning, which is not a surprise because it can be, it can be difficult. Uh, the motivation factor sometimes can be difficult. 
uh, the organization when you're on your own can be difficult. So we're looking at ways to incorporate our uh, instructional aids and, and uh, our classroom paraprofessionals to be able to provide some one-on-one uh, -on -one small group support for students that need it too. And I think that would definitely increase the number of people who are able to continue in, in something close to their regular job. We also are, are looking, if, if we are allowed to come back in the summer and uh, have uh, what we'd like to have as an extensive summer school program uh, to, to get people caught up on anything, any uh, important standards that they missed during the school year, uh, during the last couple of months here. And we would like to be able to bring in support staff to be able to help uh, with that uh, summer school work too. And that's one of, the, one of the ways that banking hours would help. And also with uh, moving some of our classrooms as we are moving into uh, some new classroom space in our elementary schools for the start of next year, uh, bringing in additional help to move uh, classroom furniture and, and classroom materials be beneficial to I don't want to capitalize on everyone, but I have one more question. Um, at our HR meeting, I brought it up, and I don't know if Carrie Barrett or Carrie has been able to get back on. Um, but I've had a lot of people in the community ask me specifically about what we're doing with support staff. Um, as you can imagine, a lot of people have different opinions on it. But one of the overlying questions I keep getting is, why are we not laying people off and allowing them to collect unemployment, especially with the bills that have passed and the additional funds that those on unemployment get that sometimes it would be more beneficial for our staff members to collect those benefits. Carrie, it's kind of started to explain her thoughts on it at our meeting, but said that she was going to look further into it to have that information for today. Cause I, I believe that there's going to be people that are asking specifically about that. Yeah, and, uh, I guess I got a text message from, from Carrie Bradley uh, that related to the first question about if someone decides to leave the school district and they owe us some time. And it, it ties into to partially into what we talked about already, but one piece that she had shared uh, that I don't think we went into is that uh, the waiver that we would have, st have staff members sign would cover that. We would have expectations built into that that require uh, any unpaid work to be paid back uh, if they do decide to leave the district. And then on uh, the, the second question that Diamond had uh, about the CARES Act that came out on Friday, uh, we don't want to get in the way of, of if staff members feel that their financial situation would be best if they uh, no longer work for the school district and they go on unemployment, uh, we certainly would work with them to make that happen. Uh, we're waiting on a little bit more specific details on how that would work. Uh, we've heard bits and pieces of, of the, the federal legislation that came out last week, but we wanna make sure that we have that really ironed out. And this, this motion tonight wouldn't preclude us from um, moving in that direction. I think that's tied into the the responsibilities that, that the board would give to the superintendent to be able to make adjustments in that way if we have information and, and if we're hearing from staff members that they would like to take advantage of that. One question I have, if, if someone banks quite a few hours and then they're working it off in the summer, but I think they're looking at their responsibilities financially, they got to pay bills every month. You know, it's this pushing that off till later, you know, it's not really, you know, if you can't find work for them, you know, and, and some of them just don't feel comfortable coming into the school buildings right now. If they have a sick relative or something that they're close to or something, they don't want to be around anyone, you know, and uh, so I guess I, it's more comment, I guess, and maybe a question, but. And those are important points that Mike raised too. We've had some good questions and, and some good points there. Uh, by continuing to pay staff now, uh, even if the work would be available for them in the summer, it does allow them to continue to meet their financial requirements now. They, they, they don't have to look for other work. Uh, they, they don't have to worry about their family uh, 
missing any bill payments that they have. Uh, they're still able to support local businesses because they still have their paychecks coming in. Um, and, and so I think that that does detail that. Then we also are working with any staff members who have concerns uh, about if, if there is work that needs to be done on site and they don't feel comfortable doing that, we're doing a couple of different things. We're doing everything possible to make sure our people that are working on site are maintaining social distancing uh, and uh, following all of the different guidelines uh, that are out there. But also if someone uh, does not feel that they uh, can come in and do work and, and it is work that's required, we're working with them individually on how to best meet that situation too. So we're, we're alert to uh, those concerns that people have and, and we've been addressing those with individual staff members as they come up. One other question. This is for you, Rich. It, it's not in the motion, but what about the coaches for spring sports? You know, I, it doesn't look like we're going to be doing spring sports, but then I hear they're still being paid and working with the kids. What, what's the status of that? Yeah, and that's another good question. As of right now, um, the spring, some of the spring sports has, has started before spring sports. And we do know that our, especially our varsity coaches, a lot of work that they do doesn't just start the day that students show up. There is a lot of work that goes in uh, to preparing uh, for those things. This uh, information from the, the, this motion from the board doesn't address coaches or right. advisors of, of clubs or any other positions like that. Uh, but the way that uh, we'd like to move forward with that is to, uh, we have a meeting set up for uh, tomorrow to meet with the high school and middle school principals and then activities directors to make sure we're identifying who all of those people are. And again, it's not just the coaches, but it's different clubs and activities. Uh, some of them have been meeting earlier in the year, but aren't meeting now. Some of them are just starting up in the spring. Uh, but many of them are, are groups that, that the advisor has already been working on. So um, I personally think that it's, it's fair for us to um, continue to uh, provide compensation for these people, but ask them to continue to work, um, whether it's providing, some of them have been, many of them have been providing uh, individual training information out to uh, the athletes on their teams, if it's a, a club like National Honor Society or uh, the Spring Play or different groups like that. Uh, a lot of work has gone into those different things already and we think continuing to stay in touch with those students and giving them updates uh, so that students aren't doing just the academic uh, piece uh, is valuable for students. Uh, but there isn't anything in the motion that would uh, required that we continue to pay those people and there isn't anything in the motion that would keep us from being able to uh, continue to pay those people. I think that would fall under the category of uh, giving me the leeway, leeway to work with our other administrators and our activities and athletic directors and uh, make a determination into how we can best utilize those people um, moving forward. I see that Carrie Bradley visually is back on and she's waiting. So we'll see if we can hear her better this time. All right, can you hear me now? Yeah, that sounds great. Uh, Ooh, but we have, the, we have the feedback. <laughs> yeah, feedback. All right, I will try and talk more softly so you don't get so much feedback. Um, I apologize. When uh, data questions came up, I went to plug in my second monitor and that kind of destroyed everything for me. So back on laptop and um, I was disconnected for a while, um, but one of the things I was looking for data for um, had to do with Diamond's question and the number of staff that we are talking about. Were you able to cover that without me or do you want me to hit on a couple points? Yeah, I think we talked about that while we were offline, Carrie. Okay. So if, if anyone has additional questions about that, feel free to ask. Um, the only comment then, if there's no questions, I would like to add is uh, uh, many of the people that we're talking about uh, in the instructional aid group um, do not work eight hour days. So just so you're aware that when we're working on accumulating hours, a lot of those people do not work an eight hour day. I don't know um, if that is uh, helpful or not. And, and then just to reiterate, 
as Rich had said when he started, um, really this is a, a short term to get us to May 1st and, uh, and then um, give us a chance to continue evaluating new things as they become available. I would, I would like to, um, <clears throat> I would like to kind of echo what Diamond said, um, that with the, the possibility of unemployment, um, this motion, on, I agree, would, if something should come up where we get a clear picture on unemployment uh, and the, the laws that go along with it, I believe we should look at whichever is best for our employee uh, and give them the option. You know, I'm looking back at our district mission and vision statement and one of the strategic objectives is to recruit, develop, and retain highly effective staff. Um, and that doesn't just mean teachers, that means support staff and everybody else. So um, I would be in favor of this motion with the idea that we should keep a close eye on the unemployment options once we get a clear picture on what that entails. Um, I guess I'm gonna echo what Diamond said what you need to understand it and, and I guess realize, um, because it's something that I am personally faced with, that my dad and my husband is going back to work on April 6th. Um, as long as they remain district employees and are employed, they will have health insurance benefits. What are we gonna do if they, if we decide to lay these people off? There goes their health insurance. So now, so now you've got an employee that's not only not making what they are accustomed to making and able to live off of, because unemployment will not equal their salary. You also have an employee now that is faced with no health care and having to pay those bills. Um, my, you know, I, like everybody else, I don't want somebody to get paid and not have to work for it. But this is salaries that we've already put into our budget. It's not like we're having to rebudget more money for these individuals or figure out how we're going to pay them. We've already figured in their salaries for the year. Um, I do believe that our staff realize that. Um, I am, you know, fairly optimistic in thinking that none of our staff are going to do that. Um, but I think those are things that we also need to take into consideration. Um, this is, you know, as everybody has said, this is unprecedented times and, you know, this is a daily, hourly evolving situation. So, you know, I think at this point, we go with what we have till May 1st and then, as Rich has said, you know, we can always revisit it at our meeting on April 27th um, or even into May if this goes past May 1st. Um, but I do think these are some hard, tough questions that as we as a board in the district need to look at. Does anybody else have any comments or questions or concerns about the motion on the floor? Uh, let me share just a couple of pieces. Uh, I had a lengthy conversation with Shana Lewis this morning uh, about all of the uh, points that, that folks have covered. Um, there are lots of pieces to that CARES Act that they passed on Friday that address uh, some of the issues that we um, are talking about right now. There is a specific provision in there and I do not know the details um, that addresses what we can do for health insurance for folks that are, um, Shana shared the buzzword for the industry right now is furloughed. If you are furloughed from your job as a school district employee, um, you become eligible for the unemployment side of things, but there is also a provision that addresses the health insurance. So I, I think uh, we're, there will be ways to address that or, or things that we can do or, or that will get done for those folks. So, um, you know, it's a, it's a very relevant discussion about each individual situation and whether that person is better in the unemployment side of things or working for the district or whatever. And that may, 
that may change depending on the length of this particular time period. But um, I think uh, in, in the simplistic version of the motion, it gives us the ability to do what we need and probably want to do in the month, give or take, until um, we get a chance to learn more and find out more uh, of the detail. And then if we needed to take different action, I think we could. So my, uh, my personal take is this is a good, uh, good direction for us to go and, and still gives us flexibility to change course if in fact it's not exactly what we need. And unless anyone wants further comment or question, I'm gonna call the vote and I'm gonna do this by roll call. So I'll, I'll beg your pardon for any kind of pauses, but uh, in no particular order. Um, Tom Westrick, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Okay, vote on the motion. Yes. Tom is yes. Uh, Diamond? Yes. Thank you. Uh, Mike? Yes. Is yes. Uh, I'll do myself next as if I were in the middle, and I am yes. And then uh, the folks on site, I'll do Karen. Yes. Is a yes. Rick? Yes. Is a yes. And Brian? Yes. Is a yes. That is a 7-0 vote. I will call that motion passed. Yeah. And thank you for everyone weighing in. It's uh, certainly a, a challenging time, but I think we're, uh, we're doing the right thing by our folks. So. I believe that's the only agenda item, if I'm not mistaken. Is that right, Rich? That is the only agenda item. Uh, what I'll do to follow up is send an email out to all of our staff members uh, providing direction on uh, what the board just approved, uh, letting them know that it uh, allows us to remain flexible as we learn more uh, in the upcoming weeks, and that we'll revisit that in the upcoming school board. Rich, with Joe adding that information at the very end with Shana, can, do you think it would be possible to pull together more of that information for our board meeting next week? Just so we all have a, a better understanding of what Joe's conversation was with, with Shana and what potential options would be later? Nothing, and we will yeah, put together a packet of information for our board. Thank you. So before I entertain a motion to adjourn, I just had one more thing. Um, would like to just politely remind everyone to continue checking your emails and, and uh, electronic communications. That's gonna be very, very critical for us going forward. We won't have much face-to-face uh, -face interaction for sure. So please, uh, please check your emails and, and uh, use that format to share information back and forth. And, uh, if we do that, I'm sure we'll all stay on the same page and, and uh, have access to everything that we need. So if there's nothing else, question-wise from folks, I would entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Thank you. Moved and seconded to adjourn. All in favor, say aye. 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 Thank you, everyone. Stay safe. We'll see you soon. Thanks, everyone. Thank you all. Thank you. My top is not culture. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I'm like, I'm like, can't say it. I know. I know. I feel your pain. I feel like I should be wearing a little sign that says it's not COVID. It's just, it's just that. <laughs>